of Investing. Mac Rhodes, Director of Athletics at Baylor, Sugar Bowl champion, Big 12 champions, men's basketball team tonight at home against Oklahoma, number one in the country, and the defending national champions joins us on Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports. What a day. What a weekend. As a guy that runs the department, I know there's many others involved, and it's a team deal. What was that like for you watching Saturday the men win at Ames, two unbeatens, and then Saturday night the Sugar Bowl victory? Yeah, it was uh, certainly a lot of fun. And, you know, you just, you, you as you're watching, you know, you're, you're so into it. And, um, and then, you know, the aftermath, you, you catch your breath and just grateful for the, for the success, you know, as you mentioned, you know, men's basketball going, going on the road, really, really difficult environment. You know, one of the, one of the most difficult environments in the, in the country against, uh, an undefeated 12 and 0 Iowa state team and being able to, to win that one. And then, you know, the, the sugar bowl, um, you know, one of the uh, most, you know, historical, prolific, traditional bowl games um, in in college football all time, and uh, to be able to to do that on a on a national stage platform and and win uh, win like we did, that was just a, a really really special special evening. So I would say that that January one was a really really good day for the Baylor Bears. Mac, what does it say about your team? I saw a TikTok um, that someone sent me of uh, one of your players, you know, putting up when it was he was leaning on the window of the hotel room. Says, "When your hotel can see Bourbon Street, but you're at the Sugar Bowl and have to follow the COVID protocols." Uh, and it, it just showed the, the discipline of. You know, it was funny that he was you know, lamenting not getting to go, but that you got a bunch of guys, a bunch of college kids in you know Stones Throw of Bourbon Street, and they chose to to focus on the game and not the atmosphere. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, that whole mantra of being most prepared, least, least distracted, um, you know, I, I think that's been, you know, the, the mantra the, the entire entire year. And uh, it certainly carried through in, in New Orleans. And you mentioned it, you know, we had a, a collection of, of young men that, uh, you know, were, were playing for one another. And, uh, and I think when you play for one another, you, you make sacrifices for for each other and uh they were they were on a mission you know the opportunity to be the the first ever you know baylor football team to win 12 games in a in a in a season and i think that meant something to them and i also think it it meant something to them to to play an sec team a a really really good sec team and the the opportunity to, to to beat them and you know, um, hopefully, when when the season ends, right, and the final CFP rankings come out, come on out, that um, you know they'll they'll be you know the the highest ranked team uh, ever. And so, uh, just uh, we have, you know, we have great great young men on on that team, and and um, and led by by great staff, and and led by you know a, a head coach that. Uh, obviously is a is a heck of a football coach and uh and an even better uh better person mac i saw a graphic that uh, the program i mean all the athletics programs put out but uh you know the the gpas the, the record gpas uh nearly across the board uh but the football program you got big 12 champs sugar bowl champs most wins in program history five wins over ranked teams most in history but then 37 graduates, 15 pursuing grad degrees, 91% GP, uh, GSR, 21 all-academic Big 12, 3.04, I mean, so on and so forth. You got two student-athletes with master's degrees. I mean, I know you talk about, you know, the, the pillars and, and the on and the off the field. I mean, I know you're proud of, of winning the Sugar Bowl, but how proud are you with the style of which this team did it uh, both on and off the field? Yeah, that's... Greg, I appreciate you mentioning all that because that's what I'm most proud of. And, and you know, I, I certainly understand that, you know, winning is, is absolutely extremely important in the, in the platform it provides. But, um, you know, the, all those other things, right, Be, because that's, what, that's what's really going to shape and mold and, and form our young men and, and, and really, um, you know, help project them, you know, a, after they leave Baylor and um, – you know, all of them are going to be, 
be successful because of their their commitment to, to all of those other things and we talk about it all the time everything counts everything everything matters and um you know, I, I think it's one one thing to, to talk about preparing champions for life and our four pillars, but it's a it's another thing um, to to be able to, to to live it. And again, look, we're we're not perfect, and um, I think the exciting thing is is we still have a lot of opportunity for for growth. And um, you know, we're, we're back at it, and um, we'll continue to to grow and and uh and even be better in in all of those those areas but uh really really proud of our our young men off and on the field and as you know coach aranda talks about the the person that that you are off the field drives uh the football player that you are on the field and um i think that uh you know our, our young men have have certainly bought into that and um you know i also thought thought it was really cool while it's just top of mind while we were on the the, the stage the podium for the the award ceremony to, to have all of the football players gathered in in front and to, to chant his name um i i think you know speaks a lot to to the respect they they have for him as as both a person and a and a coach has he performed in his year or two years? Obviously, last year was different, but and, and I know you've discussed his future many times and excited about it. Has he outperformed what even you thought? Yeah, that's a, that's a really great question. Um, and I don't know that I've thought about it much until, until you just asked it. And, um, you know, I, I think if, if you were to tell me that, you know, in his second year, we we would you know win a Big Twelve championship and you know uh, beat a, a program record five ranked teams and and twelve wins and win the Sugar Bowl. Um, I would say yeah that that would absolutely exceed exceed expectations. I think where I get really really excited is um, there's there's opportunity for for growth for. For uh, for him as a as a head coach and a leader of our program and and the best part of that is he knows that and understands that and uh, and and he will grow and uh, and he'll also you know uh, demand that the, the staff does as well and uh, and that's you know exciting for I think for for the football program uh, you know I know looking in the mirror I've got a lot of a lot of different areas and ways that I can be better and, and improve. And the rest of the executive team, I know, feels the same. And so, um, and I think, you know, all of our staff feels that way. And so um, I continue to believe and, and uh, we'll, we'll always believe that our, our best days will always be ahead of us. And this has a, been a really a special, special year. But um, I still think there's great opportunity out there for all of us. Mac Rose, Director of Athletics at Beta, with us on Sikkim 365 Radio, 365 Sports. Hey, Mac, we were just talking about uh, Transfer Portal and, you know, NIL and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and when in terms of the Transfer Portal, has there been – I know Todd Berry kind of talked about recruiting calendars a few weeks back, but is there any way to have a sort of window when it comes to the Transfer Portal? Is that something being discussed, or is it pretty much just going to be what it is right now, period, and you can enter at any time, and, and that's just the way it goes? Yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I think the, the the windows for the transfer portal, I, I think there's some, some side conversations going on in, in terms of, you know, maybe coaches, maybe some, some other, other athletic directors. Um, I don't know that it's been formally discussed. Um, certainly hasn't, you know, with, within the Football Oversight Committee. But I, I will say I'm one that strongly believes that it, it needs to. Um, we, we need to have these, 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 these windows. And, you know, I, I don't think it's 10 windows. I think it's two windows, maybe, maybe three that sync up with, with the recruiting calendar. Um, and so I'm, I'm hopeful that that's a conversation that, uh, we can have in, in 2022. Um, I, I'm a proponent for it and, and believe it, it needs to happen. I know the basketball game, the women's game with TCU has been postponed with the COVID situation. It's the first time I believe you guys have had to deal with it. 
in any kind of a way like that this year. And then I, they're coming off a tough loss to Kansas State on Sunday where they were obviously uh, low on depth. But it was a disappointing loss nonetheless because it was Kansas State. Where is Nikki right now and trying to kind of get this thing on track? And how much has COVID interrupted it? Yeah, I think, you know, Nikki's in a, in a good place. And, you know, she's got a strong belief in, you know, how she's trying to build it. And, uh and, and the culture she wants for, for the program. And uh, I think that's, you know, certainly really, really important for, for, for year one. Um, you know, now it's, it's hard, right? It's, it's hard because of all of the comparisons. And, you know, quite frankly, you're, you're not going to win the comparison game. You just, you got to be who, who you are and, and, uh, and, and stick to that and, and know and understand that you're, you're building – you know, a, a foundation. Um, certainly, you know, Nikki wants to win now, and uh, and I, I think we will win now. But um, but but also really looking toward the the long term and and uh, building something where where we can you know certainly be you know a a program that competes for national championships or is in that discussion every year like we like we have been, and uh, so. Um, you know, I think, you know, this, this, this first year, you know, Nikki knows that it was going to be difficult and, uh, and, uh, she's, she's grinding through it. And, uh, I think, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll end up in a, in a really, really good place. You know, the COVID piece, um, has been hard. Um, you know, women's basketball has probably been, been dealing with it for the last 10 days. And, um, uh, you know, going into Kansas State with with the low numbers, and that's that's not an excuse, but it it just changes some some dynamics. But uh, we'll get through it, and uh, you know, I think that uh, Nikki's doing a a great job. So is her staff, and um, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, to, to the way and and uh, and to to how she's leading leading the program. Mac, I've read uh, three different national articles this week about the men's basketball team that all had uh, Baylor is either a bit of a surprise or one of the most surprising teams you know, because they lost so many veteran players off a national championship team. But are you a little bit surprised that people are still surprised that Baylor is this good? Uh, yeah, I probably am a, a, a little bit surprised. Now, look, I I don't know that, that if you would have asked me and, you know, and if I'm being completely candid – and honest that I thought, you know, we, we'd be, you know, ranked number one going into, into, you know, the new year or right before the new year. I'm, I'm not sure, you know, I would, I would have said that, but I, I certainly thought that we had an opportunity to be a, a top 10 program in the country. And, you know, um, maybe, maybe what's a little bit surprising, Paul, is, is that um, we've been this good this early in, in the season, you know, just, you would think that with all of the new, new faces logically that, that it was going to take maybe some, some time to, to gel. But uh, I think that speaks to the culture of the program. And uh, we've got a lot of really, really talented young men on this team. But again, um, you just see it on the floor that they're playing for each other. And uh, you know, that's, you know, hats off and, and kudos to, to coach Drew and, and, uh, it's a great job that, that, that he's doing along with the rest of the staff in terms of that culture and uh, how hard our, our uh, young men play and, and, again, playing for each other. And, you know, it starts on the defensive uh, end of the floor for us. And, uh, you know, I, I think we're as good as anybody in the country defensively. And so I think that gives you a chance to uh, certainly win games on the, on the road. So I don't know that I answered your, your question, uh, but – but um, yeah, probably a little bit surprised that uh, that people are so surprised that uh, we're we're this good. I I, I thought we were going to be good. When Dave Aranda had Gatorade poured on him, did that ever actually touch his body, or was it like a Jedi ninja move where it never really touched him? And then the, his focus during that time. Have you seen some of the pictures? You were probably right near him, but did you see that? I haven't seen many, as you know, I'm not, not on social media much and, and, uh, if, if at all, but, uh, but I've heard that, uh, his, his facial expression didn't, didn't change it. You know, that's, 
that's just who who he is and oh. and uh, and I, I appreciate it. And you know, there's some moments during the game where you're gonna see a fist pump and you're gonna see him get get fired up, but um that's that's who he is and um uh, and I you know, I, I think our you know um our our young men see that and uh you know, we've talked about it before, the take on a head coach's personality, the team does and and I think that's that's why you know, when there's duress, when there's when there's stress, when momentum changes and uh, goes opposite way, our our team has been able to to really you know stay and and be steady. And there was a there was a moment, you know, um, there was you know uh, a moment during the Sugar Bowl that you know that that crowd was uh, felt like a, a home a home crowd for for Ole Miss and. Uh, you know, they started to get some momentum and, you know, our, our kids didn't, didn't flinch. They kept playing hard and kept, you know, pounding the rock and, and, uh, and, and really that's, that's coach's personality. And, uh, so, um, Grateful, certainly grateful for the way he leads. Yep. Didn't flinch like Dave when ice cold Gatorade yeah, just yeah. was poured just down his backside. Just, and then he didn't, he didn't break his gait either. No, just kept, just kept walking. Same pace. You know, it's like it's it's it, it, he clenched his fists because I think that was part of his ability to weather the how cold it was. Yes, <laughs> and he just clenched his fist, but he never changed his facial expression and just kept walking. And the players around him were just going nuts. There were some great pictures of him on the podium, smiling with not only the players but also with uh, his family as well. Uh, Mac, there were some big plays all throughout the year. I mean, Al Walcott's big pick six in that yeah. game. I mean, there there were several others. But I was thinking about just the players who played their last game. Terrell Bernard, Xavier Newman-Johnson, Jalen Petrie, JT Woods, Abram Smith, uh, who announced today he's going to the NFL. I know a lot of these guys are, are going to be in all-star games as well. But, you know, looking back at the start of the journey for many of them in 2017 or even a Raleigh Tejada in 2016 – to the ending that they had on Saturday night. Uh, just curious your thoughts on the foundation they helped build or lay and uh, the impact that uh, this particular group of guys who will be moving on had over the last few years. Yeah, I I don't know that we're ever going to be able to measure the impact that, they, that they've that they had. It, it, it's been um, instrumental. It's been foundational. It's been, you know, uh, unbelievably in, impactful. Um they 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 have been just rock solid and um you know the post game presser um sitting there and and Terrell Bernard and, and Abram Smith were were up at the, the the podium and I just I just felt like you know my 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 thought was I'm I'm going to miss these two and and not because they're great football players um I'm going to miss them because man they're just great people and um and so you know those those young men, all of them that, that you mentioned, again, um, certainly you know led by words, but but more importantly by by their actions. And you know, for uh, for El Bernard to play, you know, his final college game, seventeen tackles and two sacks and a pass breakup, and to be the you know Sugar Bowl most outstanding player, and and uh, so proud of him. And we all know the story of Jalen Petrie and the lone recruit and. Uh, Man and, and Abram and all of them you just mentioned. Um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna miss them, and I know Coach will as well be, because of not because of the football players they they are, but because of the people they are, and uh, they really really you know help build that foundation, and it it gives us you know an opportunity that that culture that foundation to continue to be be successful, and and uh, those are going to be huge huge shoes to fill on the on the football field but but also um probably more importantly and, and equally off off the field and uh but uh but we've got some we've got some uh young men that uh that uh that have been you know under underneath them and and uh have watched them and uh and i know that they'll be ready to to step up and, and fill their shoes. I don't think if you ran a, a hundred meter dash against Monterey Baldwin, <laughs> how many yards or meters would you need to beat him at a hundred meters? Ninety five. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
that was a great part of the game as well, that young freshman from Colleen from Shoemaker High School. Mac, thank you very much. Good luck tonight with uh, Oklahoma and uh, Baylor in men's basketball, and thanks for your time. Appreciate you all. Happy New Year. You too. Mac Rhodes, Baylor Director of Athletics. When we come back, Seth Greenberg. Man, he was with us a lot last season when Baylor had their march to a national title. He'll be with us a lot this season as well. In fact, he's next on Baylor and men's basketball around the country, Sikkim 365 Radio. Richard Carr.